Shouldn't you be taking over the world or something? He's going to try and seduce my girlfriend. Really? I'm going to chill, feel the vibe. I... yes, I am going to seduce Rory's girlfriend. OK, let's go. I had a moment to talk about Hello. Lenny. I'm sorry to bother you. I wondered if you had a moment oh, to talk about Lenny. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm wondering if you had a moment to talk about Lenny. So, you're the new work experience? Yeah. Do you have any experience? Of work experience? Of work? Well, yeah, I mean, I've read about it. I've seen it in the films. Two rules of selling. Stay polite. Make the customer feel they're in charge. Jesus. Three rules. No personal calls. It's not a call, it's a text. My younger brother's actually going to shag my girlfriend. I have to leave. Listen, I want you both to talk it through. Violence accomplishes nothing. I disagree. Remember, I'm a master of Ten Chow Wei. Ten Chow Wei is a restaurant, Daniel. Now, look, you're, you're both responsible adults. Come on, Dad, smack their bottoms. You know you want to. You should be at school. Come on, come on, come on. In this house, we are calm. We are reasonable. Mum just rang. Give me that. Give me that. She's my mother. She's my mother. And she's my wife. You and me should talk. My room, OK? What are you lot doing? Coming to listen to you guys talk about your relationship. You should be at school. Can you just keep it down, please? I'm trying to listen to this. I feel left out. Like, you know, something's been decided. Rory! Rory! Rory, I, I need to speak to you. Your mother's met a nice lady. He is so doing drugs. That's all they did in the 70s, take drugs. My dad says alcohol is the worst drug of all. Let's face it, parents are drug addicts. I heard that! And I resent it. The only heroin I ever had was Valerie Singleton. Now, can I please speak to Rory? We are discussing my relationship. Well, I need to speak about my relationship with your wife. I mean, with your mother. I don't sort this out, there won't be a relationship. I'll have to sell this house and move into bungalows or something. What are you talking about? She's met a woman who's changed her life, apparently. I've just spoken to her on the phone. She knows my name. They're obviously close. Yes. Very close. Yes. It all starts to make sense. What does? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look, call her, will you? Paul, that was a joke. No, no, it wasn't. This happens. There was that MP whose wife... Look, just talk to her, will you? Tell her I want my wife back. Oh, I should never have grown that beard. Hi. Oh, hello. This is Estelle Slippery's son. I understand you've got my mum's mobile phone. Oh, hello. You must be Rory. She knows my name. What, is she some kind of a witch? My voice does have a gruff quality to it. Um, do you know where my mum is? I told your father she went for a walk. Um, to think about things. I think she may be feeding some ducks at the moment. Ducks? Great job. She's gone for a walk to think about things, apparently. They do that a lot, you know. Who, lesbians? Could you just ask her to give us a call when she gets back? Or ducks? We were a bit worried about her, that's all. Sure. Sure. My God, that woman sounds like a serious... God, 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 no! My wife is in a park with a lesbian and ducks! Look! This is your problem. I have no, to deal with my... No, listen. If your mother's in a park with a lesbian, it is very much your problem. I have no problems with my mum being in a park with a lesbian. This house could do with a few more women around the place. Did I... I'm being driven insane by this. Oh, now, who is that? Probably one of the neighbours wants to join in. Whoa, whoa, Rory, old son, what's up? Listen to this. He's doing it on purpose. I'm going to kill him. Oh, no, 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 Rory! Rory! Oh, 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 o
That is, that's a really nice hat. We have talked to your father and we've told him that we do not approve of Daniel's behaviour. Oh, hold on a second. What are you, some kind of outreach social worker? I'm a rodent control operative. I'm also Laura's father. Yeah, well, Laura's an adult. In fact, they're all adults. They don't need you poking your nose in. Now listen to me, Sonny Jim. No, you listen. I can't control my own children's behaviour. I don't see why the hell you should. I can't even control my own behaviour. I clean forgot that today was my 20th wedding anniversary. You did what? Could you? Yeah, Dad. Oh, how could you? <laughs> oh, suffering. Judith. Look, Edwin, will you please take the proets through into the kitchen and play them that new CD incredibly loud? I can't believe it. Dropping by. If Laura turns up, we'll send her on to you. God, bloody thought they'd never go. Do you think they really are fans of garage rock, or they're just like listening to their daughter being reduced to a quivering heap of jelly by your brother? Well, I bloody don't. No, sorry. Things aren't good, are they? But you can talk. You're even worse shit than me. Yeah. If Estelle is a lesbian, it's your own fault, man. Wedding anniversary. You should be at school and turn this bloody music off. Lesbians don't forget their wedding anniversaries because they don't get married. Logical. Oh, marriage. My marriage is in ruins. What am I going to do? Why don't you organise a party? That way, when she comes back from work, all her friends will be here. You know, Stella B, Alison. They're lesbians. Julia, Mrs. Link from her crafts class. Oh, and that woman that had a nervous breakdown when her husband hit her across the head with the electric fire. Valerie Hogan. Right. Not a lesbian, in spite of that. Right. Oh, no, Rory, Rory! Daniel! Oh, no, Rory! No, Rory! Rory! Daniel! No, stop it, stop it, Rory! Go to your room! Blimey, it still worked. It's all over. You reckon? It must be all over. 38 minutes. Wow. How long does it take you? That's still a good business. All right. Dr. Slippery? No! Rory, put that axe down! Can I help you? Daniel! Rosie, hi. Daniel! What? Seems to be the problem. My problem is you. Lighten up. Lighten up, lighten up. What do you mean, lighten up? Would you like a glass of water? No, thank you, Edwin. I'm going home now. Rory? Yes, Laura? Bye, doll. Deathscape? Deathscape. Have you heard of self-control? Yes, I have heard of it, but... Something takes over and you're there and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Yes, it's called your penis. I can't believe this. Exactly the same thing happened on the French trip. When I wanted to go to karate, all you could think about doing was... Oh, hi, Stella. Yeah, if you could come over to the house by about eight. What's he doing? He's yeah. phoning up Estelle's friends. If he doesn't sort out our party by tonight, we could be facing a divorce situation. Maybe she is in a different time-space continuum. Maybe she's already in her office drinking coffee. Ah, now you see, that's weird, because you're both outside the door. It's not the only thing that's weird around here. I've got my car radio and he's got his woolly hat. Woolly hat? Yeah, woolly hat. You need a woolly hat when you work with homeless people. It helps you to blend in. And you need a car radio when you work in... I haven't got a clue, have you? Oh, I have, I have. I, I know that Rory works for a charity called... Side Street. I knew that. This is Raz, Maz, Chaz, and Baz, hiding in the back there. Hello. 
Are you all, um, homeless? No. They all work here. See, it's their job to actually go out and find young homeless people and bring them back into the centre. Have they found any? Yeah, me. I'm Kevin. Hi. Are you in despair? Uh, no. I feel a bit weird. I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> Join the club. How long have you been here? Three months. You're not supposed to stay more than four weeks. You know, I've got the feeling you and I have met somewhere before. You were at Cranwell School? I didn't like to say. I was. Mm, you're slippery. You were in Macbeth. You're Kevin Marshall. You were Macbeth. You were really good. What happened? I got depressed. I still am depressed. This is the nearest I've got to being happy. But time's up. They say I've got to go. It's not the house of that mad-looking bloke outside, is it? Yeah. Why are you going off the idea of staying? Maybe. You know, aggression is very bad for your anus. And, uh... Right, look, here's Rory. This is your chance to all really work out where you stand in relation to Rory. Who's the guy with him? Maybe he's for me. I need someone to love. How close are you to this man, Mr. Proek? I am concerned about your blood pressure. Hi. What's up with him? He's being a Dutchman while sorting it's our lives out. Yeah, like he's the expert. No. We must all settle down with one woman. Try Debbie. Thanks. Hi, Rory. Hi. Hey, Rory. Hi. Uh, this is Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Mr. Proek, I have had a thought. Did you say Paul Slippery? He will be able to provide you with an accurate diagnosis. Well, I am at Schiphol Airport and I just heard the bing bong from a flight to Johannesburg. Goodbye. And remember, make a friend of Dr. Slippery and all your bottom problems will be over. Proek alert. Right, you little twerp. Hello, old man. Daniel Slippery. The only women you can deal with are those you have to blow up with a bicycle pump. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Lucy. Have no fear. Daddy's here. How did you manage to get yourself involved with a rat like this? Um, it's complicated. I've tried so hard to keep you away from sex, Lucy, and now look at you! Look, Norman, can I just say, I think... Uh, I completely understand how you feel. I mean, I... We all feel a little bit confused. I mean, I'm very confused. Kevin's incredibly confused. He's homeless, for God's sakes. I, I, I am? You're all at it, aren't you? All the time. I don't know what to say to any of you. I'm, I'm distraught. I'm, I'm very distraught and, and, and a bit sad. Look, Daddy, the But thing mainly is... what I feel is angry! Two fists! One for each daughter! Daddy, stop! Mr. Proik, I'm so glad to see you. Good Lord. Mr. Proik, would you mind just taking a couple of steps? Uh, Mr. Proek, I think you and I ought to have a little conversation in private. Oh, of course. <laughs> you were Macbeth. You were really good. <laughs> so, Lucy, Laura, which one of you is sleeping with Dan at the moment? Are you sure you're not in there, Estelle? Any ideas? We could put coats over our heads. Well, we could, yes, but why would we? Can we just get on with this? It's my first day, for God's sake. Darling, it's very simple. You've just got to distract him. Look, I know people in this family think that I'm a bit of a bastard. I'd just like you to know that I'm not. I mean, yeah, I may be a bit of a bastard, but... I'm basically a nice person, even if I have got a job which, as far as I can see, involves being a bit of a bastard. Fine. Fine. Here's to your first wave of redundancies. Bye, darling. He's still paranoid that I haven't forgiven him for Laura. Well, he's right, isn't he? Yes. What does she see in it? Well, no, don't we? 
Pas là. I wasn't smoking. <laughs> It's just you're not supposed to be here between 10 and 1. I know. But where am I going to go? I used to go to the public library. Plenty of comfy chairs. I don't think I've ever been to a public library. No, well, they were big in the 60s. <laughs> so, um, what got you into looking after deadbeats like me? Don't tell me. You want to help people. You're wasting your time, my friend. Help yourself. If you don't, they'll kick you to death. Smoke? Uh, yes. No. Maybe. I'm not good at helping myself. I let my brother sleep with my girlfriend. Shame. Still, there's plenty more fish. Has she got a sister? She has, as a matter of fact. And what's she like? Rather gorgeous. Would you like to meet an older man? Whoa. Hands off. I've always sort of had a thing for her, actually. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? Why am I talking to her? I think you'll find she knows already. Hi. Hi, Edwin. It's me. I'm here with Jim, my uh, relationship counsellor. He's been married four times, so he should know. Hi! Jim says hi. Hi, Jim. Look, um, I'm trying to track down Lucy. I wouldn't normally say this to you, but I really need to see Lucy, not Laura. Tell Laura you love her. Tell Laura I love her. She went to go and see Dan at the management consultants. Kick his ass. Brutality, man. It's the only way. Cheers. Um, we haven't talked about Rory. We have to? Well, yeah, because he just walked in. Hi. Hi, Rory. Hi. Just thought I'd come over and see you guys. Well, I mean, that's really nice. I'm really glad. It's always really nice to see you. So what happened then? Did the men in white coats turn up and stick him in the bin? We do not have men in white coats, Edwin. It's women now. Equal coat opportunities. Mm. Now, he cried. It was really quite shocking. I mean, God knows, Pilfer's been the bane of my life, and Estelle's come to that, but you don't want to see a chap cry. I felt bad about it, really. Why do you feel bad? Well, because I should have seen it coming. I had all the classic signs of hypermania, euphoria turning to rage, high energy levels, loss of judgment. Oh, of course, you fancy me. That's not what I meant. No, 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 I know I'm past my prime. No, I think you look stunning, Estelle. I mean, when I'm really old, I hope I look like you. Oh, thank you, Lucy. Well, you chaps going to work? Got the day off. Laura's coming over. Rory? Day off. Lucy's coming over. Edwin? School? Study leave. At least you two have girlfriends. <laughs> you boys have got to stop thinking about sex. There are more things in life, you know. Can't think what they are for the moment, but there must be. Hello, what's this? Erogenates the potion of love. Oh, interesting. This unique brew of herbs, spices and oils enhances feelings of love and tenderness. Sprinkle four to six drops. You'll experience increased mutual attraction and heightened senses of touch and taste. Love is literally all around. Do not use when operating heavy machinery. It may cause temporary blindness. Doesn't really say that. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You've been using erogenate. That is pathetic. And she says may contain traces of nuts. So into whose drink have you slipped this phony nostrum? Yours, father. So that you might love me. All right, let, let's be scientific about this. Shall we? I am, after all, a doctor. Now, contains cloves. All right, cloves. C-L-O-V-E. Take off the C. What have you got? Love. 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 All right. Now, there is no scientific connection between clove and love. Cloves are what charlatans crush and bottle and sell to suckers like you. It's only a bit of fun. No, it's not fun, Edwin. This is the 21st century and we're replacing medicines with remedies. Bullshit is literally all around. What was all that about? We need some love. We should, like, convince him that that stuff works. It's totally wasted on him, guy. Anyway, he's so old, he almost dead. I thought you were going to use it on this girl that Lucy and Laura are going to introduce you to. She's hot, 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 apparently. So am I. I'm hot, hot, hot! Yeah. She 
is Laura's cousin. And she's going to be around here soon. <laughs> no, I'm going to be doing all day. Hello. Hey, hey, hey baby. baby. Mm. Oh, this is Wodge. Hi, Wodge. I'm a girl. Yeah, I had noticed. Some people don't. This is my brother. So, sweep me off my feet. <laughs> um, uh, we've got to go upstairs. So soon. Let's get back to this erogenate stuff. Be honest, I, I could drink the whole stupid bottle and it wouldn't raise my serotonin levels by a gnat's shoe size. So we're going to get Dad to join us for a nice cup of tea, and two of us take this fiendishly powerful drug. Go through the motions of increased mutual attraction and heightened senses of touch and taste. Then persuade me to buy the bottle. Thereby defraying the cost of my original investment. Really need this, guys. Might cost me 20 quid. Who's going to take it? Me and Dan? Well, no, you guys are already mutually attracted. That's a good point. It's got to be two people that aren't a couple. Me? Yeah, don't mind. Yeah, but who are you going to take it with? Well, don't look at me. I don't want to be a couple. I come um, individually wrapped, I'm afraid. Cool, whatever. Laura, do you want to take it with me? <laughs> Sorry. Hey, um, why don't you and Laura take it? Because you guys aren't a couple, are you? True. OK. Edwin, you're in charge of tea. Old maid's tongue. Yep. Yep, I'm writing that down. Okay, fine. Bye. Hi. Hi. We've made some tea because we want to try an experiment. Involving? You. Ah. I think you're a little hard on Edwin's love potion. Maybe. Maybe not. Well, averse to increasing the amount of love in the world, are you, Dad? No, I have no objection to that at all. Edwin secreted two equal amounts of the potion into two <laughs> identical cups. Basically, we're going to shuffle them around so that we have no idea which two contain the substance. Yeah. It's a controlled experiment. Minimises the placebo effect. Well, you're a doctor now, are you? Just making it scientific, Dad. So, ethanol, i.e. alcohol, clove, cinnamon, eulalia leaves, essence of rudeberry, whatever that is, nermanin, 0.0123 milligrams, wirinesia root. I think I'm still having that sort of feet on the ground sort of a feeling. Maybe the Wiranisi route hasn't kicked in yet. What about you? Uh... Wodge. No, nothing. There never is with me. Mm. This tea's lovely. It is. It's nice tea. Mm. It tastes a bit different, actually. What is it? Oh, it's um, loose leaf mix. It's Chinese and Indian. Mm. No. What do you think? But, too soon to say. Actually, I am definitely feeling a bit more relaxed and calm and open to things and to people and to... Me? <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, I'm not convinced it's... I mean, I, I think, you know, pharmacologically... Oh, I love you, Dad. Don't worry. You know, I've, um, painted my skirting board green. What sort of green? Green, green. Can I see it? Yeah. Let's go. Don't be too long! <laughs> well... I can't sit around all morning blind tasting love potions. I've got to go and heal the sick. <laughs> or at least point them at the nearest A&E department. What are you doing up there? The joke's over. 
I didn't like the way Laura was acting. She was acting loose. Or was she? Maybe that stuff really does work. If anyone ever slipped anything into my drink to try and seduce me, they would so die. <laughs> well, no one would dare watch. Should we go and see then? I don't believe this. This is so amazing. Oh, oh, oh you know so well. Oh. Oh. Ah. Uh, uh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, you two. That's not funny. <laughs> oh, it is funny. I thought it was funny. But then I don't have a sense of humour. Oh. Lucy? Ow. What's he done to you? He hasn't done anything to me. Ow. <laughs> I itch. I could do something about that. Shut up, Dan. You never know what you might pick up if you sleep with Dan. Yeah, you're quite a promiscuous guy, Dan. What is this? I'm so fed up with this stereotype of me as the man who does it with everyone and passes around sexual diseases. Why? Good point. I've only slept with you. Lucy and you, Laura. And. and. and Helena. and Amy. and Sarah Jane. Yeah, and Rebecca Frawley, but everyone's done it with her. And Maeve, once. Oh, and Janet. Carol Ann. Oh, yeah, and David, of course, and Colonel Gaddafi, and the New York Police Department's male voice choir. For God's sake, six women. Seven. is not a lot in the last. Well, you know, recently. Did you really sleep with Janet Floss? Oh, no, for God's sake. Janet Floss doesn't. Janet Kleinman. I didn't sleep with her. It was kind of a mistake on a late night bus. Well, I haven't slept with Rebecca Frawley. Neither have I. Yeah, well, you can relax, Dan, because the itch is on my right buttock, where you persuaded me to get a tap to. You what? I didn't force her, it was consensual. Um, listen, you, you better go to surgery. What, have you got the number? Yeah, yeah, sure. Which, which surgery do you go to? Your dad's. <laughs> what do you mean we just oh, screw? God's sake, Stan, Laura's trying to say something to you. The least you could do is listen to her. She feels used by you. After all, you've, you've branded her. She feels very... How do you know what she feels? Because, unlike you, I try to stay friends with people after I've gone out with them. Don't think this new man act fools me, Rory. You're just pissed off that I got Laura. <sighs> I don't think you have got me, actually. Girls shouting at boys. We're all doing it. Yeah, we heard. Are you all right? I'm fine. I tried to bring them up right, Laura. I tried to teach them to respect and understand women, but it seems that only one of them was listening. I wonder which one that was. Oh. What? Where, where do you want to be then? Anywhere you're not, actually. I've had enough boys for today. Why don't you go to Mum's talk? What's it about? Women going back to work. Sounds quite good. Why? Because she needs all the female support she can get. See? He actually thinks about people. <laughs> Come on, guys. Creep. Pub. I'd never have my name tattooed on a woman's ass. Yeah, well, requires considerable powers of persuasion. It's just naff. And I don't believe she really wanted that done. I'm out of here. It's Pilfrey's first day back after his enforced absence. Huh? Can I have a lift? Oh, sorry, darling. I'm not going to the office this morning. Mm. That's funny. I thought you were. Going to work, I mean. Oh, no, no, no. I got a meeting in another part of town. Ah, another part of town. Of course, stupid of me. What's up with him this morning? Does he suspect anything? God, I hope not. 
Now remember, Rory, new man. New man. Consciousness raising. Consciousness raising. Oh God, it's such a strain. It's just so hard having to live a lie. I just don't Hi. know how. It... Oh, hello. So where's Daniel? Oh, uh, Daniel had an urgent meeting. Daniel's no longer a proper member of this family, in my opinion. It's completely pissed Laura off. Where are the girls? I haven't seen them about. Ah, uh, it's because we're having a cooling off period. They're coming over later today just to talk about things. Relationships are difficult things. People go through changes. They feel differently about each other. It's not easy. Sometimes it can be very, very painful. What's all that about? He thinks something's up. He feels insecure. But the only thing that is up is that we all think that he's a wonderful husband and father and that we love him dearly. Yes, I certainly think he's a wonderful man. And I'm very glad that later on today, the two of us, father and son, are hosting a men's consciousness raising group. That's right. Right here where you live as men to discuss your problems as men. Uh, no, not that he has any problems as a, as a man or, a, or as a doctor either. Oh, hello. Where's Dan? Urgent meeting, running late. He's acting so weird lately. What kind of weird? Hi. Urgent meeting, running late. Text message from Sweden. <clears throat> what up? Oh. Okay, um, Laura and I have been talking. And? Oh, you say it, Laura. We don't think it's going anywhere. Rory, Lucy's very fond of you. Can't speak for herself. But it doesn't seem right. And Dan, you and me. All seems a horrible mess somehow. I'm sorry. It's over. For all of us. Do you two always do everything together? Yes. Yeah. So that's it. You're not going to talk about it. You're just going to walk out like that. That's it. I'm afraid we are. It's all my fault, really. I'm sorry. Thanks a lot. <sighs> this is my fault. Oh, I don't know. There are girls on every corner, my brother. It's gonna be in your neck of the woods today. Why? There's money in poverty. The new Führer. Oh, hi. Sorry I haven't said hi before. My feet haven't touched the ground since I got here. Where were you before? Before? Before homelessness called. Oh, at University of Reigate. You? I've been all over. I was with Age Concern, trying to drag them into the 21st century. I kicked ass with the Samaritans. They were phoning each other by the time I was through. You're a... Kind of like a manager. Gorilla manager. Charity is are not nice, my friend. The world of philanthropy is a tough one. I've called a big meeting this afternoon to discuss our management structure. Be there or be square, my friend. We are about to modernize and it is not a time for old-fashioned sentiment. No sleeping bag is safe. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hi, hello, hi, hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. This is Daniel Slippery from Elucidate Management Consultants. He's prepared a plan for us. Daniel. Thanks, Harry. <clears throat> Modern charities are tough, money oriented institutions, and we at Elucidate feel that a heritage of caring is no substitute for the bottom line. Now, the biggest asset of any company walks through the door in the morning. It's you, but you're also the biggest overhead. Rory has a question. Uh, yes. How long are we going to have to listen to this bollocks? <laughs> I prepared a plan which details the staff to be lost. What? At the end of the meeting, 
I'm going to read it to you. And then we're going to club you to death. <laughs> Just how good a beggar are you? Do you use bandages? Have you got a dock? And is it the right dock? Dad? Listen, your father has an extremely serious drink problem. He's on his way over to talk to you. He is extremely dangerous, Rory. It's, it's Peter here. He is in urgent need of therapy. Look, I told you, I can't talk about this. Bloody Daniel's about to fire me. Damn. Ten pounds. Mum, look, I told you, I'm in the middle of an important meeting. I can't... Rory, you don't seem to have got hold of this. Your father is extremely dangerous to himself and others. Now get out of there while you have the chance. He's full of rage and despair. Jesus, he is here. Get out of there, Rory. Get out now! Oh, hey! Uh, excuse me. No, it's all right. I'll handle this. Nice. Sit down. Um, so, so that, that's, um, let's, let's get to the main event. This is, um, my redundancy plan for side streets. Uh, redundancy? Good idea. Cut out the dead wood. No, don't, no, don't cut out the dead wood. You could have saved wood. Wood doesn't grow on trees, you know. Shut up. I've analysed the books and I've studied your working practices and I've concluded that only one person is surplus to requirements and that's your managing director, Harry Green. What? He pays himself too much. In the three weeks he's been here, he's claimed 19 taxi fares and 15 lunches. What's wrong with the bus, Harry? Ever heard of a sandwich? <laughs> Guys, look, I'm an MD. I, I don't do buses. <laughs> and to the rest of you, including my hard-working brother over there, you're the beating heart of this concern. All power to you. Why am I clapping? Thanks for this. Look, whatever Estelle has told you, and that is entirely her affair, I, I just don't want to get into a slanging match. What, what matters to me is that my relationship with you guys is, you know, unchanged by the, the things that are going on. Uh, what things are going on? I don't want to get into that. Well, no, neither do I, but as far as I'm concerned, nothing's going on. Nothing going on, Daniel? Um, not as far as I'm aware. Estelle does think you're an alcoholic. Well, then she doesn't know me. Peter Mailer thinks you're an alcoholic. Oh, Peter Mailer thinks everyone is an alcoholic. Dad, you are pissed. <laughs> Text message from Reykjavik. Beat that. Dan, you're my brother and I love you, but we don't want to beat that. OK. Well, I think I should be going home now. And I would very much like it if you two chaps would come with me. Because you are good men, decent, God-fearing men. And I know that you wouldn't lie to me. Not about anything major, anyway. Right, men. Let's raise some consciousness. Hello, Paul! You have absolutely no interest or sympathy for me, have you? Really? I mean, really? I am going to work early because Gwendolyn has called me in for a meeting. She's probably going to sack me. A fat lot you care about that or anything else for that matter. Um, this, this is sort of mine. Do you mind if I take it? Oh, no, no, no. Take it. Take it. Take the bloody kitchen sink for all I care. Mum? Mum? It's a bit upset about you guys leaving. How brilliantly perceptive of you.
pants. These are categorically not your pants. I think I know my own pants when I see them. <laughs> I think I want to be seen dead wearing your pants. No, well, it's important what pants you get seen dead in. You know, you get hit by a bus. I don't want to embarrass the nurse with an unseemly pant. <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss you guys. I'm only around the corner. Oh, can I take a hundred years of solitude? No. Uh, yes. No. Yes. Maybe. You are falling into a deep sleep in which you'll obey my every command. And when you wake up, you'll forget you ever had any possessions at all. I can't believe this is all you own after nearly a quarter of a century on the planet. Oh, don't look now, but Edwin's at the upstairs window. Looks like he's in mourning. Maybe we should wave or something. He's got watch, guys. All right, come on, chaps. To 33A Alluvial Road, Clapham, quick as we can. Stiff upper lip. Parting is such sweet sorrow and all that. At least I'll be able to get into the bathroom now. We all have to do it. We grow up, we move away from home, we leave our parents behind while they... You know, die. Well, this is... This is really nice. Your mother and I shared a place like this before we were married. A bloke called Purvis. Did you have feelings for Purvis? I did, yes. Severe distaste. To do with his habit of labelling things in the fridge. This is my milk. Half of this bacon is mine. Well, I have to go. Uh, what about a drink at the end of the day? Be nice. Um, are you mum okay? I don't know. I'll tell you this evening. This is really nice. Somewhere in there are some Marks and Spencer's codfish cakes with pancetta and salsa verde. Well, let's drink our way through to them. Isn't it odd? Isn't what odd? After you've had four or five. Or six. Or six. No, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about after you've had four or five or six? No, I guess. What? What's so odd about it? You don't want any more? No. After you've, you know. What? With a woman. Yes? I mean, it's endless, really, isn't it? What is? The longing. I suppose it is, really. Want another lager? Yeah, why not? I swear, I, I heard Lucy's voice. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's how it starts. You think you hear their voices on the wind. Then you see them everywhere. Every passing spaniel has Lucy's face. I heard her voice. They're not coming back, Dan. You screwed it up by shagging Laura. I screwed it up by convincing myself I fancied Lucy. End of story. It's just you, me and 300 cans of lager. I just love bastards. Oh, I love bastards too, because I am a bastard and, and I, I know how nice they can be. <laughs> I, I'm not a bastard. I'm a sensitive, intense, incredibly feeling young man who just occasionally likes to go. <laughs> Oh, 
Ah. Uh, the door was open, so I... No, no, hi. Well, it's me. It's really nice to see you. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Paul. You're a bit... Early, I know. No, 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 it's just we were... Well, we were just about to go to the pub, so... Mm -hmm. Want to come along? No, it's OK, you go, I'll, I'll wait here. Yeah, sure, cos we're only going to be... No, you take as much time as you want. Cos you've probably got things to talk about. It's important to talk. Your mother and I should have talked more. Mm. You OK? Oh, for God's sake, I'm fine. Go, go, I'll wait here. <laughs> See you, Dad. <laughs> Bye, Paul. Um, I felt rather bad about taking this. I'm not really sure it's mine. I gave this to Estelle years ago. Dad! Dad! <laughs> He's drawn the curtains. What's Mum's <laughs> car doing here? You don't think... <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> what are we going to do, then? Could always go home, I suppose. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> 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 what took us so long? <laughs> Search me.